Welcome back to this episode of StackStorm Deep Dive. I'm Rick Kaufman, Global TME. We're going to talk about how to install packs into StackStorm. Now, packs are all these things that are available to us as StackStorm developers. We can go out and get existing automation off of the StackStorm exchange. And all these packs, we can load them into our StackStorm server, and then we can take advantage of that pre-written automation for us. Let's take a look how that's done. In my mind, the secret sauce to StackStorm is the integration pack. The integration pack is a lot like those applications that we put on our cell phones. So say we want to um, tweet something, so we get the Twitter app and plug it into our phone. Well, that's kind of what a pack is in StackStorm. If I want to talk to ServiceNow, I get the ServiceNow pack and I load it on my StackStorm server. And now I have all the automations that I'll need to talk to uh, ServiceNow. And if there's something in there, some functionality I'm missing, the lion's share of it's already put together. So you have just a little bit of work to get the functionality that you're really looking for, but you'll be surprised a lot of these things have what you need right so you'll go out and get these packs and plug them in the stack storm you'll get another pack plug it in the stack storm and now because those two packs are plugged into stack storm they can send information back and forth to one another but they can also send it to every other thing that's on the stack storm exchange so if we look at the exchange um, this is where stack storm keeps all of its integration packs and you can see out here, there's, you know, AWS, S3 Buckets, Azure, there's um, there's VMware, there's a whole lot of stuff. There's some Cohesity, you name it. Uh, it's out here. We've got, well, not you name it, but there's like 180 things out here. There's a ton of stuff. There's some Hyper-V and uh, ServiceNow, um, Napalm, and the list goes on and on. So... The point is, is all the, all the automation behind these packs are already written. So you will have to, excuse me one second while I get rid of this noise, and we'll say, these packs are already written so I don't have to do that work. All I need to do is um, I have something unique, like the Star Wars API that I wanna write an integration pack for. I just have to write that one pack for that one thing and then you get automatically tied into all of these others so this really starts making your automation very very easy because you can send messages and events across all of these integration packs and soon to be the integration pack we're going to create so if I take you and show you that um, Here's a bunch of stuff I'm working on, but here's the Swappy. So the Swappy integration pack kind of looks like this, and most packs will have this the same structure. And I'm just gonna go through it pretty quick here so we know where everything's at. But I keep a changes MD folder, or file rather, so I kind of track the changes we're working on. I'll keep this picture of the um, the icon for this particular pack. So we'll see that later when we get into the GUI interface for StackStorm. So we'll have an icon in there. There'll be your license file. And then um, the next thing, the pack YAML. So this is a little YAML file that says the name of the pack, the, the description, some keywords, and um, the author. So that's in all of our pack files. The other thing we'll get in here is the readme that'll tell us how to install it. The requirements text file, if you have some Pythonic um, package requirements, you can put those here and this will get imported into your virtual environment that StackStorm creates for your pack. And then there's the uh, swappy YAML example file. This is an example file of things that your application is going to need like usernames and passwords and default URLs and stuff like that. So that goes into the example file and kind of along with that, 
the config schema pretty much just basically shows you the schema for what that, that actually is. But we want to take this file in order to make um, our actions be able to see this information, we need to put it in a directory inside Stackstorm. So if we come over here and take a look, um, we're sitting at Stack Op Stackstorm. So there is um, a config file called configs. And if we change directory to configs, we will see we have all these YAML files. And if I cat the, the swappy YAML, you'll see that that's, that information is already in there. So when you install a pack, you can use the web interface to go and add this information into this file for you. But I'm just showing you that I create this and I add this in every one of my packs, the YAML example, and all you have to do is copy it to the um, op stackstorm directory inside the Docker desktop client for stackstorm. So I just went to here, we got to our client, and we actually got inside the container by pressing that button. And that's what we get over here. We're sitting on a command line of the of the st2 client. So I can say st2 action list. Remember that command, and we can see what's going on. So good thing I got this. So what this means, if you see this, it means you probably have to log in again. Oh, let's get back here. It's st2 login. T2 admin. And you saw how I couldn't back up there. When I'm in this container, I usually will type bash. And it just gives you, you know, a better environment to work in. So if you uh, type something you want to type, you know, backwards, you can. Okay, that's the hip tip of the week. So the point is, is it's inside configs. And if we look... It doesn't say swappy example or YAML example. It just says swappy YAML. We drop the example when we move that file into this directory. And I'll show you where that's at in the GUI a little later. But that's how we get the, some, some, it's not the only way, but it, it's a way we can get information into our actions. Okay, so that's kind of all the files here. The, now we can talk about the directories. There's some rules. And um, we can look at a role, and you can see that a role has a name. And um, there's the trigger for the role. And this particular tri trigger is the core interval timer that says, I'm going to wait five minutes, and the trigger is going to go true. And then the role will run. So um, this is what a role looks like. And then down here is the action it calls. So that's what a role is. So the next thing for a role are actions right so we go to actions and we said that this was like go run a rule um, people just know so we look at our rules where our I'm sorry go run an action we look at our actions and we can come down here and we can say hey there is an action called people just know and if we look at it it's it just says the name of it and its runner type is orchestra it's the um, it's what Stackstorm uses to do this workflow um, process to actually get information from one action into another action into another action. It's the um, orchestration piece of this. And our entry point, this is the interesting part, is another action. So the entry point says go to the workflows directory and run this, this YAML file. So if I do what it says, I go to the workflow directory. Inside my workflows is where we keep workflows. Here is the file, people just know. And now here is the lion's share of what we'll be doing with packs. If we have multiple packs, we're just going to say the first task is to run this from the swappy pack. We're going to get people. When it's done, whatever it did, we're going to publish that 
into a variable called people and then we're going to go and call another action from the swappy pack to go and load the people and we're going to pass it the people that we just published up here and we published this into a place called the context so i'm saying from the context go get people do this action and when you're done go to the swappy pack now this could be any pack name get the mongo people it goes in it gets the people out of the database publishes it once again to a people variable and now i jump to another pack service now create the record here's the table name and with ctx the context people i'm going to go ahead and run this one item at a time and when i'm done i'm going to go to the swappy ap our swappy uh, integration pack and run another command so that's kind of what's going on but if we look at just a simple action and we go down here a little bit we're going to say that i'm going to um from live actions i'm going to import to swappy base action and that means i'm going to go look in the live file which is right here our direct folder <laughs> And then I'm going to look in here for this action. So it says live actions. So I have a folder called live with the actions pie in it. And from that, we are going to import this thing called the base URL. So I have this config. It's in the config files called swappy.yaml. And it's in the configs directory, the, stack, the op stackstorm configs. It's got to be there because that's where we're going to look for it. But when we fire this thing up, and don't worry, this looks crazy. We'll get through all this. But we have a class here, Swappy Base Action. And we are going to go and look for that config file in the configs. And then we are going to say um, our base URL is going to be what the result of this is. So we go down here and we say... Um, we get from the config that base URL. And if we remember, down here, it said that we were going to have a thing called base URL inside our config. So that's that's what's going on with um, that. So that's how we say, go to the live actions, get the, the base config, goes to the live actions, and says, oh, we're going to, with this swappy base action, we're going to return the base URL. So it's going to go out to that file in the configs directory, get the base URL, bring it back, and return it here. So in our, in our action, where we get people, it says down here, we're in, instantiating a new class based on this. So that means that the base URL variable in that class is now part of this loop and so when we say self base url that's where we pick up the base url and then we just append people to it and then we go get our people and do our thing so we're going to cover all this in detail and this is like a whistle stop through a pack but i just want to show you all the moving parts of a pack we're going to drill into every one of these one at a time so don't worry just i want you to stay tuned stay with us we're going to be getting under the covers very soon, and we're going to start coding up our own pack. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next chapter.